I welcome all who are participating and praying with us via the live stream. We offer the Mass for the Monday in the sixth week of Easter. Today's Mass is offered for the repose of Ebe Raimondo. Christ, having risen from the dead, dies no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray, grant to a merciful God that we may experience at all times the fruit produced by the Paschal observances. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul we set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace. The following day to Neapolis, from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer. We sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its Maker, that the children of Zion rejoice in their King. The Lord takes delight in His people. Let them praise His name with dancing, making melody to Him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people, He adorns the humble with victory. The Lord takes delight in His people. Let the faithful exult in glory, let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is glory for all his faithful ones. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will bear witness to me, says the Lord. You also will be my witness. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, he said to the disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you to keep you from stumbling. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, an hour is coming when those who kill you will think that by doing so they are offering worship to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father or me. But I have said these things to you, so that when their hour comes you may remember that I told you about them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel is received in different ways according to the uh, disposition of the person receiving the message. St. Thomas Aquinas, he wrote a famous dictum in Latin, whatever is received is received according to the um, attitude or capacity of the one who is receiving. So we notice our Lord in the Gospel is talking about hostility that he predicts in the minds of the Apostles. They will be thrown out of the synagogues and even put to death those who will be put to death um, will hear that their foes understand it is the will of God that they die in their minds, the minds of those putting the disciples to death. So it is a very violent future the disciples face for the love of Jesus. And yet the Spirit of God is always there, as our Lord calls him, the Spirit of Truth will be with the disciples as a lasting and permanent gift to strengthen them. On the other hand, we see the positive reception of faith and this is recounted especially in the beautiful story of Lydia. She's the first European Christian, the first person in Europe to be baptized by the Apostle Paul. And this is a charming episode in the life story of St. Paul and Luke and Silas. Notice the we, uh, the pronoun we, it is understood it is St. Luke now recording for Paul in the happenings of the book of Acts. So that it is understood he is then with Paul and Silas. Here we have a community, we call the city now Philippi, uh, ancient Philippi, which lay on a very strategic road, a road called the Ignatian Way. It went from Byzantium all the way across to the uh, Adriatic Sea. If we could imagine then a road going right across the top of Greece, from one end to the other. The Romans, who were great road builders, built many famous roads this is one of the most famous roads in Scripture because it is all about St. Paul and his visit to Philippi. So this lady, Lydia, she bears the name of a region where she is from called Lydia. She is from Asia Minor. Her city, Thyatira, is one of the seven churches in the book of Revelation. 
Remember the churches whom Jesus chastised for their uh, faith or faith, faithlessness in different ways. And she is a woman of means and she readily receives baptism. She is, of course, a proselyte. That means she was not yet a full-fledged Jew, but one who attended the synagogue. And here it is thought there was probably no synagogue, but she attended the gatherings of the Jewish flock, who were very few in number. So she was open to God. And more than open, she is ready to receive the good news of the risen Christ. She accepts baptism and then she welcomes St. Paul and companions to her household. It is said that St. Paul was hesitant in such instances because he liked to rely on his own economic means as a tent maker, that he didn't want to just go to any place but liked to be self-sufficient. But it is something hinting to us about the character of Lydia. She was one of those uh, mulieres fortes, very strong-willed women who would take no, who would not take no as an answer. So St. Paul and his uh, group stay at her house. A beautiful story of hospitality and openness to the gospel, the first baptism in Europe. And we have small, some small little churches there along the river where she was baptized that we can even see today. The psalm today echoes the joy of the growth of the church as the European church begins in the baptism of this courageous lady. We ask God today that we will be led by the spirit of truth, especially when times are difficult, when times are stressful, but also when we feel moved by the spirit to welcome God in a new challenge, a new direction in our life, as did Lydia. The spirit will guide us in all things, in all situations, and in all ways. We offer our prayers to the Father. Gracious Father, look upon us and hear our prayers on this uh, 40th anniversary of the Mount St. Helens explosion. We pray for all those uh, who suffered and those who died in that explosion 40 years ago, all those affected with the volcanic ash, and we pray for those who are volcanologists and scientists to help um, humanity um, in the study of such situations. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We remember Pope John Paul II on his 100th anniversary of birth today. He is named now as our secondary patron in the Archdiocese of Vancouver. We pray in thanksgiving for his life of service to the Church as shepherd. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the um, uh, Snowbirds personnel who died in the crash yesterday in Kamloops, uh, the pilot who fell and then the journalist who uh, died from the Snowbirds uh, group, and um, for God's healing in that tragedy, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. On this uh, Victoria Day holiday in Canada, we pray for Queen Elizabeth. It is our public day to remember uh, the Sovereign as Head of State that God may give her the spirit of truth as head of state for this country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the sick, especially our family members 
our relatives, our fellow parishioners, those with the COVID virus, for their healing. And we remember and include especially Sister Maria Walberga from Vancouver area now in the Benedictine Sisters in Colorado, diagnosed with colon cancer for her healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our parish school, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, hear our prayers and intentions that we bring to you. Grant, in fact, what we have prayed for through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of the law to laud you, yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. The halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, and we thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Ebe Raimondo, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. In the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, welcome them. Into the light of your face of mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, the Spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you. Throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always, with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, Seeking the ruin of souls, Amen. We fly to thy patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. I remind everyone uh, that we will be opening up for a partial opening with the five Sunday Masses next Sunday. For those who would like to participate at Mass, to come back to Mass, we welcome you. You must have a reservation. You must phone into the parish office or email to indicate your presence at Mass. And we will have to be rotating because we cannot accommodate everybody. It is only groups of 50. So I welcome everyone to consider that and to please phone the rectory to let us know that you would be coming. Many people are very afraid of the virus. Many will not be coming, but many will want to come. We will also be needing help with the uh, disinfecting of the church, so please uh, offer your help if you are able to, able-bodied, to help wipe down the church after every service. Thank you.